Sometimes being nice to ourselves is harder than it looks. In fact, a recent survey by Ulta Beauty found that negative self-talk is the biggest obstacle to being able to experience joy. It's such an important topic. Thankfully, Mel Robbins is here to help. She's a best-selling author and the woman behind one of the best-ranked podcasts in the world. Oh, my oh. gosh. This is such an incredible study and such a big deal. Talk to us about how this all got started. Well, this is one of the reasons why I was so proud to get involved with this project called The Joy Project, is that... What was happening is that inside of Ulta Beauty stores, the 53,000 associates noticed how people would walk in every day, beautiful people, people with incredible personalities. Yeah. And when they would look in the mirror, they would focus on what they didn't like about themselves. Mm. So they organically were concerned and wanted to do something about it. Mm. And that was the beginning of something called the Joy Project, where Ulta Beauty did a huge research study and they wanted to know what is the inner critic? Uh, where is it coming from? How is it impacting us? How, uh, what are we criticizing ourselves about? And the biggest finding was this, and this is the huge headline for everybody. The single biggest obstacle to you experiencing more joy in your life is your own inner critic. Mm. Mm. You know, you said something that resonated with me during the commercial break. It's not just looking in the mirror and being like, oh, I feel fat or oh, I feel this. It's more nuanced yeah. than that, isn't yes. it? You said making yourself feel small. Yes. And so I define your inner critic and the negative self-talk as anything that you say to yourself that shrinks you. That makes Give you... us some examples, because oh. I think we can think of the big things. Yes. But the smaller ones are harder to come by. I couldn't do that. It never works out for me. Mm. I'm not that smart. Mm. Uh, she's going to be successful. I never will be. Uh, I'm too old for that. Mm. Um, I can't say that. They're going to be disappointed in me. It's never enough. I mean, I it's as simple as like not raising wow. our hand to speak up for ourselves, right? Exactly. Not mm. raising your hand, not going for the promotion, yeah. not taking the painting class, not asking a roommate to pick up their things or not borrow your clothes, not uh, applying for graduate school, mm. oh my telling gosh. yourself you don't have time, telling yourself you're too late. Yeah. We were just talking about this this yes, morning. Yes, we really were. And I think, okay, so I think now that we know what it is, yes. we've identified it. How can we recognize when we're doing it? You know, because well, sometimes we don't. Actually, this is what they found in this huge study with the Joy Project. 66% of the time, we're not even aware that we're doing it. Totally. That's how much yeah. it's become almost like a playlist in our mind. And here's yeah. what I want to tell you. So there's really good news here, okay? When you understand that first of all, you deserve joy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You deserve joy in your life. I don't care what you've done, where you're at. You deserve to experience joy. That's number one. Number two, you were not born with this negative self-talk, right? Right. If you think about the six kids, right. Sure. Between the yeah. two of you, yeah. <laughs> when they were babies on the ground, they weren't, they didn't fall down and go, Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm never getting up again. My life is over. So I'm true. stupid. I can't so do it. True. Like, and here's why I say this. You're not wired mm. for this, for this. You are wired for possibility. You're wired for joy. That is your natural default. When you were a baby, when your kids were babies, they'd crawl across the floor and they'd put their Claire hands on would them. Claire kiss and... herself in the yes. mirror. Yeah. Yes. I think kiss themselves. Yes. Kiss themselves. Yeah. Yes. That, this is the good news. This is your default. This is your natural intelligence. That's why you miss feeling joyful. So how do you put it into yeah. it? Well, so, yeah. Okay. First, I, how do, okay. So yeah, tell us, you have okay. a whole little thing. So first you have to identify that you're doing it and you see that with your kids and just like the associates were seeing it with the guests that were coming in, right? You can see it in a friend when they're criticizing yourself, you have to identify it in yourself. And so it's almost like it's a feeling. Am I holding myself back? Am I coming up with an excuse? Am I speaking to myself the way that a friend yeah, would speak totally. to myself? Yeah, totally. So you got to identify it. Second, you got to interrupt it. Mm. You have to interrupt it. And a quick way that you can do it is give it a name. Ooh, wow. Yes. Well, just think of a name yeah. that you could call that nasty negative part of your And that girl is, she's creeping up. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know. yeah. Gina, Gina for me. Gina. Yeah. Okay. So when Gina appears, what yes. do I say to Gina? Shut up, Gina. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Gina. You're not, you're not going to the painting class. Are yeah. You? Wow. Shut up. G I bet when you thought about starting your book club, yeah. that inner critic was there. Oh yeah. 
And the thing is... Imposter syndrome, right? Mm. Well, that is kind part of... Part of it. Part of They're it. friends. When you feel small, when you feel yourself shrinking, when you feel yourself pulling back or saying, I couldn't do that, all the excuses that you come up with, they may be legitimate Fears. obstacles. Yeah. But you got a brain and you can solve problems. Yeah. And when you tell Gina, shut up. Yeah. We're starting this book club. Yeah. You now aim your thinking at what you want instead of spending your time listening to Gina tell you what you can't do. Yeah. All the Gina's out there. We love you. I know. No, it's like, <laughs> I, it's like, I love show. <laughs> no, but that's what, do we have time just really? Yes, we do. Talk? Hold on. Okay. okay. So, so you interrupt it. Okay. Give us, keep going. And, and, and then the third step is you have to tell yourself something inspiring, but here's the catch. It's got to be believable. What do you mean? So shrink it. Like give an example. Maybe the book club won't work, but I'm going to try. Yeah because I want to do it. Maybe uh, I won't get into graduate school, but I'll be proud of myself if I try. Or how about this one? I deserve to feel good mm. today. So if you th say to yourself, gosh, I just, I'm not having, I don't look that great. You say to yourself, stop. Stop. I Gina, deserve, shut up. Gina, stop. I deserve to feel, feel good, good today. today. That's right. Simple. I deserve oh, to feel good today. Wait, now, I know. How can we model this for our kids? You what have to we model be doing? it for your children. And let me tell you why. Because by the age of five, you can predict whether or not a girl in particular is going to have a negative self-image mm. based on how mom talks about herself. Mm. So you have to model this by interrupting your own inner critic and inserting something inspiring. And here's another piece of advice that was part of the training that we did with Alta Beauty. Always compliment not the external, totally. but the internal. Use words like amplify. Talk about your personality, your mm. energy, your commitment, how good of a friend you are, mm. what a hard worker you are, the fact that you have such bright eyes and the energy mm. is coming through them. So and not only say that about yourself, but say it to your kids, yes. as opposed to saying, look how cute you are. No. Yeah. No, I love, yeah. I love how, yeah. how passionate you are yeah. about this. Yes. Mm. Because that's something you can control. You can't control what you might look like totally. on any given day, right? Because we've all had those days. <laughs> but you can always control the energy or the passion or the work ethic or the loyalty. Creativity. Or the creativity. Yeah. And so when we amplify that in ourselves, we now can pass joy forward to somebody else. And it's easier to do with somebody else. Yeah, but, it totally is. But I want everybody to take on a joy project. I want you to interrupt the inner critic. I want you to name it. I want you to start to tell yourself something inspiring, and I want you to remember something really important. You're wired for this. Joy is your natural default, and you deserve it. You get one life, and I don't want you to spend it telling yourself some negative garbage. And if you are hearing these words, it means you are breathing. It means you have time to experience joy. It means you have time to start doing the things that you need to do to make your life a little bit better, and that's what you deserve from yourself. Oh, here we go. I know. I feel like we love you so much. I want to have you for the whole show. This is so incredible, y'all. If y'all want more so Mel, good. and who does not listen to the Mel Robbins podcast on Apple, it is incredible. So It'll good. make you feel better wherever you get your podcast. She just took me to church. I'm she sure did. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. <laughs>